Hello everyone, here is part two of our cantilever beam bending moment parametrically. You may be tempted to put in multiple loads uh, as was done in figure two of the handout, but it's not worth it to do that because you could always use superposition to simply use this program over and over again. So if you had a load at the tip, there's the moment in the wall, and there's the moment anywhere along the beam, just get this height. Uh, but And if you had a load halfway across, this is the um, moment diagram, and just superpose those two situations. Easy breezy. Suppose now that we wanted the different situation of a uniform load on this cantilever beam instead of the point load. Now we know it's going to be a parabola. So what I'll do is I'll just simply save this whole document as something else and I'll call it cantilever um, uniform, uniform loads demo or whatever. And now I'm not going to delete this but I'm just not going to show it. I'm not going to show this. And then I'm going to uh, rename this to be M wall due to the point load. So I'm going to rename this M, and that's a right click in the algebra window, M wall point load. Okay, so now, uh, and then I should change this dynamic text, I guess, too here. Notice that the object got changed already. So I'll call that M wall point load. This is not dynamic. This is dynamic. Okay. And then I'll just hide that. And then I'll hide the arrow to uh, just hide that. Okay. And I'll hide this cut too. Um, so now I will put a uniform load on there. Uh, some load W. Uh, it can go from anything you want. Zero, let's say zero to couple hundred. This is force per length though. Be careful. It's not force. It's force per length. Maybe increments of 10. Force per length, not force. Uh, and then I will draw it just because it's so nice to draw. So again, the circle, uh, I'll start at the tip here, circle, center, and radius. And this will be W over my force scale. No need for a new force scale. I could just tweak my force scale. Something, it doesn't matter. Uh, intersect. Find 12 o'clock, hide six o'clock here for us. Hide the circle. Uh, no need to draw another circle here. I could, but let's just do a perpendicular line. Super easy. A perpendicular line snaps through here. And then find the intersection. Now be careful. The intersection tool, the best thing that you could do in any of these programs is to get the intersections to the lines because the lines are infinite. If you get an intersection to these bricks, which is tempting, you know, the bricks could move, right? Uh, so, um, uh, intersecting the line is 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 uh, unambiguous. Boom! So there it is. Uh, so I'm going to hide this, uh, and I'm going to hide this line also. Don't delete it; just hide it. And then I'll put in a little uh, load polygon in here. Go back to the original. Uh, escape. Right click. Uh, object properties. Uh, style here you got to go down a little bit it's slightly clunky but we could do hatching and then you could scroll down further sorry about the clunkiness here 90 right there you could change the spacing make it a little more porous change the color because forces are red in nature okay so there's my uniform load um I hide that uh, hide that just for looks. Okay, now uh, I'm using the mouse wheel to reposition things. Now M wall uniform, 
M wall uniform. Can you do this in your head? Yes, you can. W times tip X, it's case sensitive, squared over two. So it's WL squared over two because the entire beam is loaded. And notice that's a big number here, 15 uh, to 10. So I need maybe to change my moment scale. We'll see in a second, circle, center, and radius. So it will be M wall uniform over the moment scale. That looks okay. Intersect. I'm gonna draw it on the tension side because I'm Euro cool. Hide this, don't delete it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's not a straight line, it's a parabola. So I need one more point, or you could really crank this out if you want, but I'm gonna make a simplification that I know some of you may find distasteful. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to use a circular arc because it's so simple. All I need is three points for a circular arc. If you want more points, like four or five points, you could actually put a spline in there, S-P-L-I-N-E. A capital S is the command, but I'm not gonna do that. Too much trouble. So I need one more cut, uh, some kind of intermediate point. Uh, so I'm gonna call it uh, variable, uh, intermediate, I'm just gonna call it intermediate X or something. Uh, going from zero to tip X, that's the furthest that you could be. Increment, let's say of one. And now this intermediate point, intermediate point is, remember you have to use capital letters for points. I use the parentheses and both of them show up here. The X value of course is intermediate X. The Y value is zero. And there's my point, you could see it right now. You could see it moving. I'm going to draw one of my lines. I'm gonna uh, open up one of my lines here. Instead of the axes, it doesn't matter. I will grab a parallel line, pass it through this intermediate point. I'm gonna hide that line. Leave this line here for a moment, pun intended. <laughs> uh, circle center and radius is, oh, I don't have the moment yet. I was making comedy jokes. Okay, so what is the moment at the cut for this chunk? Well, first of all, recognize that it's just this chunk uh, times W, that would be the force, and that chunk's load goes at the centroid of the load, which is chunk over two. So it's W times chunk times chunk over two. So let's find, let's define chunk. That's the technical term for it. Chunk is, can you do this in your head? Yes, you can. It's tip X, that's as far as you can get, minus intermediate X. Okay, so you could check this out before you do it all. So I'm going to change my tip, and the difference between these two is the chunk. Yes, I see it right here, okay. Now the M, let's call it M chunk, why not, is W times chunk squared over two. And again, I'm getting a little animation here, turn that off. Okay, so the M chunk is there. It should be dramatically smaller than the M wall. Uh, uh, depending on where the chunk is. All right, and then I will make my moment here. So now uh, I have to put my M wall uniform. Uh, ooh, I think I lost that point, rats. Uh, I'll recreate it, sorry. Um, I think I lost it. Uh, maybe you could always, uh, this is a good learning experience. Here's the big circle. What is this circle here? You can click on the circle. There it is, M wall uniform. Yes, okay. 
so I could, oh, there it is. I see it. Okay, moment scale. Very good. So I need this point here. So that was a little, little learning moment. Um, you could always rename this point if you want, then it's easy to find in the point uh, entities. All right, here we go. A circle with center and radius. This is going to be M chunk. It's case sensitive, so look at what you capitalized. Uh, over moment scale. And find the intersection. Hide, don't delete. Hide, hide, hide. And now I could draw that line, and again, it can't, I know it's a parabola, but I'm just going to use circumcircular arc, partly because I love saying the word circumcircular. It's such a beautiful word, circumcircular. And the command is select three points on the arc. One, two, three. It's a thing of beauty. Uh, I could uh, do my dynamic text in here. Uh, M wall uniform load that's just text is and now go find the object M wall uniform uh, I like to put in my units here we're in America so foot pounds there we go if you want you could even put in the intermediate one why not M at cut, let's be a little more precise instead of calling it chunk. You could even do this at uh, M chunk. Oops, that was an oopsie poopsie. Here we go M chunk foot pounds. Okay, all right, so I have a very nice tool here. Obviously, it's all dynamic. Obviously, it's all scalable. And now you see why I'm using, oh, let me change this scale here. Right click on that object properties. I could just beef this up to anything I want. Now, what I was going to say is you could see why I chose circumcircular arc at a very shallow curvature. It's, it's indistinguishable, right? And there's, you know, you can't beat the ease of circumcircular arc. So again, this technique can be superposed with M wall point load if you want. And this will be extremely useful because now we have the situation for a uniformly distributed load and we have the situation for any point load on a cantilever. And now we have lots of power at our disposal.